Hey everybody, thanks for swinging by. I really do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're going to be talking about this 103, or at least the variation of the 103 from Palmetto State Armory. Uh, realistically, this is not necessarily a perfect clone, but for People who are looking to get into the AK platform wanting something a little bit different, this is going to be close enough, right? <laughs> um, realistically, I'm not going to sit and talk about the differences when it comes to this rifle because there's other channels out there that have already done some really good deep dives into some of the differences between the PSA and the KUSA 103 variants. Um, and they do a better job at it. What, what I'm looking to do here is give you guys an overview of what's going on with this rifle. Talk about uh, my experiences, the things that I like about it, some things that I am not necessarily all too happy about, things I'd like to see improved, and then go from there. Uh, but let's get into, real quick, what is the 103? The 103 is... Uh, what you would hear as the 100 series rifles that Russia put together in the late 80s. Now, it's uh, I'm not too sure exactly where in the timeline it actually was quote unquote adopted. Sometimes I hear I've heard like late 88, early 89, but realistically, that's about when they started developing the 100 series. Now, the 100 series is going to be the AK platform that has been updated a little bit to have different calibers. So you're going to have the 762 by 39, you're going to have the 545 by 39. And then you're going to have the 5.56 NATO. In addition to that, there's going to have a couple of different barrel links on the different models as well. So this is the 762 by 39 16 inch barreled version of the 103. Naturally, again, from Palmetto State Armory. And uh, let's talk about that. Palmetto State Armory is a brand that has been making AKs now for several years. And while they... I would say probably stumbled coming out of the gate initially, they've done some really decent work here of late. Notably, the PSA AK-47 GF3 uh, has been a really decent model. They've done some upgrades to that since, and then they've introduced the 103. This will have a fixed stock, which is the version that I have, but you can get a side folding stock as well. And if that's something that you're interested in, and maybe you want to change out the stock, you're going to need to know that the hinge pin on that side folder is going to be a 4.5 millimeter for you guys out there who are interested in that. Okay, so let's get a overview of this rifle. Um, we'll take out the magazine. This is a nice little windowed bake that I got. I love that thing. It is empty and safe for you safety Nazis out there. Okay, so we're gonna start off with this single chamber break on this. Uh, this is a great addition to the AK platform. Usually you're gonna get that 45 slant break on the end here, but this has been updated like the 100 series rifles had to this single port break. And let me tell you, that right there, it really helps out in the um, recoil impulse and um, really keeping this rifle really, really flat. It's going to be a right-handed twist 24 by 1.5 millimeter thread pitch, and that is going to be attached to a 16 inch FN Cold Hammer Forge chrome line barrel. And that right there is the backbone of this rifle. That's what really sets this rifle off against some of the other uh, versions of this that are out on the market today. Not only are you getting a barrel from a really high quality manufacturer, as in FN, but you're also getting a chrome line barrel on top of that, which is going to do a couple of different things. Number one, it's going to increase the longevity of the barrel. And number two, since it's coming from FN, you're going to be able to ensure that it's concentric. So if you want to suppress this right out of the box, you're not going to have any problems with that, like you may on some import rifles, which is one of the reasons why Dead Air came out with their Wolverine to kind of fight against that. If you're someone that 
it's like myself who has a dead air Sandman, I can just get an adapter for the uh, barrel here, throw my Sandman S on, and I would have no problems and I would never have to worry about a baffle strike. So that's like one of the high points of this rifle and something I really, really do like that PSA did about that. Uh, they have gotten kind of dinged on some of their other AKs for not having a cleaning rod. This one does. And then right here, you're gonna see the 90 degree gas block on this rifle, which is going to be indicative of those 100 series rifles. Uh, a lot of people will look at it and say, oh, that's gonna be like a Bulgarian SLR or whatever. And yeah, that's true, but that was developed from the Russian rifles first, so there's that. The furniture set on this here is gonna be your standard polymer style com block esque uh, furniture set. Um, there's some small, subtle differences between PSA's version and what you would find should you ever, you know, were to get a, an actual Russian 103. But realistically, for the people who are new to the AK platform, that's not going to be that big of a deal, uh, realistically. Incidentally, if you guys are looking for a good comparison of the PSA 103 versus the KUSA or the Kalashnikov USA uh, 103 in comparison to that of an import. Uh, Tim from Military Arms Channel does have a really, really good video. Now I get it, Tim, before you start typing down in the comment section down below, Tim's been in some hot water with uh, Copper Customs and importing some SVD rifles uh, from Romania um, and uh, yeah, I, I get that whole thing. I get it, right? But if you were to take that aside and just listen to the information that he was presenting, uh, it's really, really good information. So you guys can get, can get a side-by-side -side comparison to KUSAs versus PSAs 103 um, to you know kind of make a decision on what you wanted to do. All right, so moving on back from there, you know, standard sights on this rifle, 800 yard increments on the rear sight. Front sight's going to be open just like a normal uh, AK would. It's not going to be like a Norinco or a uh, Romanian RH10. It's going to be the open, so I like those better. Dust cover is going to be the smooth dust cover. Uh, good, good receiver here, standard. Safety lever on this that has an upgrade. We'll talk about that here in just a second. And then, like I said, polymer, uh, polymer stocks and everything uh, going on. The internals uh, is going to be the forged front trunnion, forged bolt, and forged carrier as well. So that is something that PSA has been doing since their GF3, and I applaud them for that. Uh, they continue that with their... AK-47Es or their, their enhanced versions and uh, also in their AK-74, which is like unattainium right now. So <laughs> but uh, realistically, the fit and finish of this rifle looks really, really good. Rivets on this are perfect. There's nothing that is overpressed. There's nothing that's underpressed, nothing canted. They all look really good and they're consistent. They're consistent not only on this rifle itself, but it's also consistent on the GF3 as well. Moving from that rifle to this rifle, uh, very, very consistent. So we'll do a comparison of that in the next video so you guys can kind of see the differences between these two. All right. In addition to that, they have the Standard com block optics mount on the side here. I've got a Midwest Industries um, mount attached to it. So if you have anything that will uh, accept the standard com block AK mounting uh, setup, uh, if I can even get that out, then you'll be fine. That's something that's been very consistent with uh, PSA and I really do appreciate them for doing that. Uh, I've got the Primary Arms One Power Cyclops set up on top of here and I really like this combo. It works out very well, uh, not only for the rifle but the optic itself. 
So let's talk about the things that I have really liked about this setup. First and foremost, with the 103, you're going to end up with a very flat shooting rifle. In my opinion, this actually feels a bit lighter than some of the other AKs that I've talked about on the channel so far. And with this muzzle device on the end of it, this really helps in mitigation control uh, and recoil control rather and recoil mitigation is what I'm trying to say here. Uh, so really, really nice there. Uh, again, I talked about the rivets, very, very consistent. The really great thing that they have done, PSA has done with this rifle, is that they have done an enhanced safety lever on this. So you have this ledge right here for your index finger, and all you have to do is swipe it down and swipe it right up. On a normal AK that doesn't have these enhanced safety levers, uh, you can pick them up from like uh, Krebs Customs. They sell them if you guys are interested in that. But if you don't have this ledge right here, you have to kind of break your grip and reach up to the very end of the safety lever and swipe that down as you're bringing your rifle up. Here, it's very simple to, you know, set that up and go, you know? So that's something I really do like that they went away from the 103 setup to add that in. It really, really helps helps things out. All right, so uh, what else do I love about this rifle? Um, inexpensive. That's one of the great things about PSA is the fact that they are able to set up a pretty decent rifle for you guys and not break the bank. Currently right now, trying to find something anywhere similar to this is going to be pushing $1,500 or more. This is coming in right around that $900 mark, sometimes a little bit cheaper um, or you know maybe a little bit more expensive depending on some of the options that you're going to be choosing, whether or not it's a side folder or not. And we'll talk about um, th how this stands up to the other two rifles that I think are a really, really good deal right now here at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that. Before I go any further, I need to take a second to say thank you to you guys. You are the sponsor of this video. I don't have anyone supporting this other than you guys. And if you feel that I've deserved it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That would really help out if you think that uh, this material is helpful to not only you, but to some of your friends. Go ahead and share that video with them as well. That's one of the best ways that you can support the channel. Please share the video. That would be awesome. Okay, so let's talk about some of the things that I don't like about this rifle. And the biggest thing that really bothers me with um, not only this rifle, but with PSA is the fact that you cannot get one of these very easily. You have to be Johnny on the spot when they drop these on their website, uh, ready to buy. I mean, you have to be ready to buy as soon as you see the, them come into stock. Most of the time, they're sold out within minutes. So the best thing that I can tell you guys to do is to go ahead and set up a, a alert or sign up for their um, emails so you can see what's coming and what's going to drop. Normally they drop all their new stuff like at 3 p.m. Eastern time, I believe is the time. The other way that you can go about it is follow them on Facebook and Instagram. They usually post stuff there as well. So that's the best thing that I can do, best piece of advice to give you guys uh, about this. Now, naturally, I'm not getting paid to say anything good, bad, or indifferent. I'm just here to kind of give you my thoughts after putting a few hundred rounds through this. I'm going to um, put this through a carbine course here in about a month. And that's really going to test this, uh, you know, running it hard for about a thousand rounds should really give us an idea of how well it's going to do. I'll do a follow-up video from there and we can talk about it and what I have experienced since then. One of the other things that I'm not a big fan of when it comes to this rifle is PSA has some QAQC concerns. A lot of people complain about uh, the the quality of the stuff that comes off the line from PSA. And I completely understand that. By no means am I here to uh, agree or disagree with anybody on that because realistically, everything that I've purchased from PSA has been 
very good. I wouldn't say perfect. I've had uh, some rifles that have had have needed to be uh, tweaked just ever so slightly. Um, but realistically, I've never had a rifle fail on me. I've never had a rifle that has been a problem. And um, the majority of the PSA rifles that I have in my collection uh, have been bought. They haven't been sent to me, so it's not like something that they have like tweaked to make sure it runs well or anything like that. I've bought them. Uh, but I will say, and I will acknowledge that, yes, there are instances where they are producing stuff that are... I would say not where they should be and people have had issues with them. Uh, I do feel confident enough that they will stand by their work. So if you do have a problem, you can send it in and uh, they'll get it fixed for you. But that is something that has to be talked about because PSA sometimes um, has some issues and you need to, you know, call that out whenever Ever possible. So far, after a couple hundred year rounds, uh, no issues whatsoever. Um, I've really enjoyed this rifle, and realistically, it's one of my new favorite AKs. Now, I've got some other AK stuff coming up here in the future, and I'm excited about that. Uh, more details on that here, hopefully, in the next couple of weeks. But um, I'm going to be taking a trip. I'm going to be taking a trip to Arizona. If you guys know, then you guys know. All right, so <laughs> needless to say, that really kind of covers it as far as the overview, the likes and dislikes about this. But in comparison to this rifle and the KUSA, this one, I haven't shot the KUSA, but I know that it's going to do very well in comparison to this. The only big difference between the two is that this is going to come in about $100 cheaper. So just keep that in mind. And then in comparison to this, to say like the Zestava ZPAP, um, this is going to be lighter and still a, uh, about $100 cheaper or so as well. So this is going to be, I would say, probably the best budget AK that you can purchase right now. Um, and we're talking something that's $900 or less, um, even when it comes to some of the con block stuff. The fit and finish on this is going to be far better than that of a Wasser. And, uh, you know, PSA is just doing a really, really good job as far as an American AK manufacturer. So there is that. But what do you guys think? Sound off in the comment section down below. I want to hear what you guys have to say when it comes to not only this rifle, but some of the other rifles that PSA has put out. I know that they have announced a whole bunch of stuff last year at uh, SHOT Show, and not everything has been released yet, but fortunately COVID has caused a huge concern when it comes to not only the supply of parts, but also being able to you know, have companies fully staffed uh, during COVID to be able to build stuff. So just keep all of that in mind as well. With that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Thanks so much for swinging by and being a part of this video. I really do appreciate it. Again, if you guys are interested in supporting the channel, one of the best ways that you can do that is sharing this video with your friends. And then there's tons of links down in the description below if you guys are interested in finding other ways to support the channel. Most of it's affiliate links. It's not going to cost you anything extra and it's going to be a great way to support the channel. That being said, we'll get out of here. Thanks so much, guys. We will catch you guys later as always. Freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Bye, y'all.